All right, I'm back here. It's 1 p. Oh, it's 12.59. It's 1 p.m. on Monday, January 2nd, 2023. Happy New Year to everybody. I'm glad you're here. Excited to see you in this amazing high-impact group. Again, I want to thank Brandon for uh, allowing me to partner with uh, him, this group, and the amazing coaches that are teaching here. I've been watching and following some of the coaches in the group, and it's a wonderful place to be, a wonderful place to learn um, and teach and grow for all of us. So again, my name is Raul Lopez Jr. My topic here is your story sells. Real briefly about me, uh, I'm the founder of a forum called Tag Talks, tagtalks.org. Tag stands for transparency, acceptance, and growth, and it's all about sharing your personal story. I'm the author of a couple of books. I have my primary book that I teach out of, uh, Heal the Boy and the Man Will Appear, Learn the Importance of Understanding and Expressing Your Emotions. And then I do some anthology books where people share their stories in our Tag Talks books and on stage in our speaking forums. So I'm very passionate about people sharing their stories. In the beginning, the uh, I, I used to share my story. Uh, I used to share it. I used to volunteer in Juvenile Hall churches, uh, wherever I could share my story because I had overcome a lot of challenges in my life. And just sharing that personal story turned into a coaching business where I now have my own speaking forum and I help people not only tell their stories, but monetize their story. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about that in uh, your story sales topic for uh for for the group today let me see let me get my notes out here i got a couple of things that i've written down that i make sure that i want to share with you guys all right so first of all everybody has a story okay you have a story you've survived every hard time you've ever had <laughs> if you're watching this right now or if you're watching this on a replay i'd appreciate if you'd hit replay just so i can see and know um, who's watching this in the group and then uh, we can continue to do this on a weekly basis and continue to help people share their personal stories. That's what I'm so passionate about. Now, everybody has a story. Uh, you've survived many things. And what I tell people all the time in my daily coaching sessions is that your wisdom is not common knowledge, right? Um, common knowledge is things that we understand and know that so many other people understand and know, right? Wisdom is gained by experience. Wisdom is gained by hard times, right? Um, hard times create wisdom in our lives. Good times when things are going easy, we can learn a few things, but the wisdom actually comes when we overcome a challenge in our life. So I'm here to tell you that you have wisdom, you've gained wisdom over your life expand and through your life experiences that others don't have, that others don't know. So for example, if you've gone through uh, a job loss, and you couldn't find a job. I don't know if some of you guys were around in 2008, but similar is happening right now in the real estate industry, right? Where people have made good money, didn't save it. <laughs> I experienced that back in 2008, made, made good money, didn't save it. And then all of a sudden everything stopped in their industry. And when everything stopped in your industry, if you haven't saved or you haven't put away uh, for a, a rainy day per se, then all of a sudden you don't have any money and you're in a deep challenge, right? And you have to figure out ways to start to create an income. I call it creating your own economy. So when you do that and you're figuring things out and you're seeking and you're working hard and you're struggling and you're taking action because you have to, you're gaining wisdom in that. Okay. I'm going to give you another example that uh, uh, going further with that. And, and because everything that I teach is what I've experienced, right? I didn't open up a book, read it and go here, I'm going to teach you something. Uh, and I don't think that any coach should do that <laughs> personally. Uh, what I teach is what I've, I've experienced, what I've learned myself and what I do for myself. And I think that's the best way to be able to coach people um, in whatever industry you're in is that if you've successfully worked or are successful in the industry you're in now, that's what you can help people with. And it might be life. It might be business. Um, it could be any type of coaching, marketing, whatever it is. So anyhow, back in 2008, I'm gonna go back to that. Back in 2008, I was highly invested in real estate. If those of you that know what happened in 2008 is real estate stopped, right? And, and the side of the real estate that I was in was fix and flip. Um, I would get uh, buy, buy lots, buy land, and then build a house on it. I would um, rehab homes, resell them. I, I was very short. Everything I did was kind of turnaround, right? Maybe three to six months turnaround. And when the market dropped, immediately overnight literally uh these the the model i was using for my real estate investments didn't work anymore because the lot that i had bought 
the house that I was building on it all of a sudden wasn't worth what I was paying to build it. Uh, the the apartment complex that I was rehabbing all of a sudden wasn't going to give me the return on investment, the ARV, the after repair value that I had planned for it. So the mindset that I had back then was kill and eat. What that basically means is uh, you're working for something, you get the money and you live off it versus long-term investments um, like rentals, for example. I and mean, we're talking about real estate because I have some experience in real estate, but this 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 works for everybody in any business. So the mindset that I had back then what and everything dropped off is I would watch the news mistake number one <laughs> to try and figure out what was happening, what was coming and what I should plan on for the next years to come. But the media only does one thing, gives us negativity. The, ne the media tells us what's wrong, what's going wrong, what's going to be wrong, and uh, how things are never going to get better. I don't know. For whatever reason, that's what sells in the media. <laughs> so that's what they talk about, things that are going wrong. I listened to what the media had to tell me, and I allowed myself to fall with the rest of the economy and the majority of people that were falling instead of choosing, thinking for myself getting away from the media and choosing and creating my own economy. It took me about six months before I stepped back on to my feet, where I got back on my feet and I said, Hey, I got to do something because I don't see anything turning around the real estate industry. I've lost just about everything that I have. What do I need to do to start making an income, to start a new business? What do I need to do right now to create my own economy? And I'll, I'll kind of sidebar there. What I did is I started to ask the right questions right? When we ask the right questions, we get the right answers. If we ask the wrong questions, we'll get the wrong answers. For example, uh, if I asked myself at that time, how come I'm such an idiot? Why did I lose everything that I had? Then I would get the answer to that. And that answer wouldn't be positive. It would be telling me why I was such an idiot and why I lost everything that I had. But when I started asking myself, how do I get out of this? What do I need to do next? Then those are the answers that I got. And for me personally, after a long list of seeking, understanding, and studying, I came down to two things. I said, I, what does everybody in an economy like this have to do every single day? What do you have to do if you're broke, if you have no money, if you don't have a job, if, if you're struggling in an economy like back in 2008, what do, I have, what do people have to do every single day? And the, answers, the two answers I came up with is people have to eat. You have to eat. People got to get dressed. Got to get dressed every day, <laughs> right? So, the, I mean, there's probably other things, but those were the two that I came down to. You have to eat and you got to get dressed. Now, after losing properties and everything that I had, I did have a, a literally a cash bucket hiding. Um, I won't say where. Um, and I said, okay, I'm going to take this cash and I am going to do either food or apparel. I did not choose food because uh, I thought that's a lot of messy work, opening a restaurant. There's a lot of overhead. There's a lot going on with food. So I chose apparel. Um, I knew nothing about apparel except that you can buy T-shirts from a wholesaler and maybe print something on them and then resell them. And that was my initial idea. So I started going to wholesalers and I thought, hmm, how much is it if I buy these T-shirts wholesale? And I started asking that question. And uh, I went from distributor to distributor. And one guy, and I, I realized something that the more you buy, right, the, the, the more bulk in, that you buy of anything really is the cheaper that you get it. But most people sold a plain T-shirt between 3 and $5. So I started kind of putting that together at like a budget. And then I went to one guy and he said, yeah, he says, if you buy, you know, 100 of these, they'll be three, between 3 and 5 bucks. But if you buy a 1,000 of them, I can give them to you for 75 cents each. And I was like, 75 cents <laughs> for, for the same T-shirt everybody else selling for 3 to 5 bucks if you just buy more. And uh, he said, yeah. So, so my mind, entrepreneur, uh, I thought if he can sell these to me for 75 cents, how much is he getting it for, right? The people who are selling them for $3 to $5, they're getting them at a wholesale price and they're either making a killing, which in apparel I learned that you do, or they're not buying in, in bulk. They're maybe just buying uh, and, and redistributing. For example, if I say I need a, uh, I need, you know, three dozen T-shirts. They're going to go maybe buy six and make, you know, and maybe get them for $2. And then they tell them to me for three. Uh, but buying thousands, you get them for 75 cents. So I started to look for where the distributors, the wholesalers were getting them from. And in that search, I met and learned and connected with people selling 
every type of clothing apparel you can think of from uh branded closeouts to brand new put your own brand on your shirts uh designer jeans i just met started meeting people in the industry and that's part of taking action too right went to the the los angeles uh fashion district and started meeting people within six months i had two warehouses full of apparel i had over 200 customers all around the world and internationally and i was distributing uh what i what was called um uh Overstock, overstock product, products, right? So, for example, uh, I went to back in this time, Ed Hardy was very popular. I don't know if you guys remember Ed Hardy, but I, I found the Ed Hardy, the person who had the licensing. I don't know if you know how that works either, but when you see a brand and the brand has jeans, it has shirts, it has phone covers, it has keychains, umbrellas, whatever, somebody has a license for each one of those products. So each one of those products, even though it's all the same brand, somebody else is manufacturing. I found the manufacturer for the guy who was producing the Ed Hardy jeans. And I'll just throw some numbers out there because I don't remember exactly what they were. But let's say he went out and he ordered and produced 50,000 pairs of Ed Hardy jeans for that you know year, that season. That's the other thing. Clothing and apparel is by the season, just like anything else. And uh, he sold uh, 40,000 of them at his regular wholesale price. What he had left over he had already made so much money on in profit on the 40,000 pairs that he sold. He has these 10,000 pairs left and maybe they're even outdated by now. He just wants to get rid of them. So you find somebody like that and you go over to him and you go, Hey man, I'll, I'll I want to buy some of your uh, overstock. And uh, the more you buy, the cheaper you get them. And a quick example, I, I picked up those jeans, I think for $12 a pair. If I remember right, between 12 and 20 bucks a pair, they were wholesaling to places like Macy's and, and other uh, big, big retailers, they were wholesaling those jeans for 59 bucks. I got them for less than Macy's and those types of places got them for. And then I could actually wholesale them. Or at the time too, the two warehouses I had, one of them, I had a retail front. I was selling them for $150 a pair. I picked them up for between 12 and $20. So that, that industry uh, is, th there's a lot of profit to be made. And that story sells <laughs> right what i'm teaching you today is that your story sells and that your wisdom is not common knowledge i gained wisdom from going broke in the real estate industry and then seeking to learn how to create my own economy and make more money or just make a living in general and i by by seeking i started making phone calls i started visiting wholesalers and then i started looking for the manufacturers right and then the people who held the license and one thing led to another the next thing i know i had two uh a wholesale warehouses and a retail front. So do you think there's wisdom in that? Do you think I can share with people how to grow a business, how to, to seek and find and the right people to shake their hands, the vocabulary to use when you're talking to certain people, how I learned to speak the language of the, the whole uh, apparel industry within two weeks. There's a lot that has to do uh, details that have to do with every industry, right? That's wisdom gained. Right. And the story I just told you, I've told in various uh, speaking events that I've had, depending on my audience and who I'm talking to. Right. I have other stories about coaching. I have other stories about being in prison. I have other stories about A, B, and C, and all kinds of things that I've experienced in my life. And depending on the audience that I'm in front of, I will use those stories to inspire, to teach, to pass on the wisdom, and then offer a product. Your story sells. Next step. When you have a story or you realize that your life experience is wisdom and that there are stories, things that you've done, things that you've overcome, things that you've had successes in, and those all those are all stories that you can use from a stage or on a webinar or in a training program, then you start to see that you're, 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 you can monetize your message and your story sells. Now, I use my personal story to get those speaking gigs, right? So I share my personal story and something I've overcome like that 2008. There's a whole nother two or three stories in the 2008 that I can share. Um, I won't do it right here, right now today. Uh, but you take that wisdom and you, and you mold it, right? And I'm going to help you do that in these, in these sessions here in this, in this group. And you mold your talk down to a 15 or 20 minute talk. And then you take that talk and you expand it back to an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, or even 90 minutes. And what you do is you start to chunk in certain topics and certain messages, certain stories, depending on the audience that you're in front of. The one I just told you about uh, with the apparel would be if I was speaking to a bunch of entrepreneurs, right? I have other stories where I hired my first coach. 
and how I made my first seven figures with that first coach. And actually that was a story about how I got into real estate. So when I'm in front of a group of real estate agents, I'll tell that story. Or if I'm in front of a group of people who really need to understand that hiring a coach can change your life, then I'll share that story about how I hired my first coach. And I was so scared to hire the coach and I didn't have the money and the whole thing. And I'll talk about how it changed my life because it really does. When you're trying to learn something new, if you want to learn to speak, right? If you want to learn to be an author, if you want to learn to share your story, if you want to learn to monetize your story, then find somebody who's doing it and successful at it now. And they'll teach you. That's why I'm here to teach you. So you take that story, you expand it, you chunk in the messages, the right story that you have, the right experiences that you have that can help people um, understand who you are, build the know, like, and trust in you, right? That's the primary story about what you overcame in your life and what brought you to where you're at today and how your successes are, uh, the successes you have, the successes you have today. <laughs> um, that's how you get people to know, like, and trust you. And then in between that, you share your knowledge. Um, and your knowledge should be something that's pushing them towards buying a product from you. Right. Then what you do from there after you have all that put together is you make sure that you have products to offer them. Specifically, if you're a coach, you should have coaching products. Right. And I always teach people how to create four coaching packages. Okay. And this is what you want to do. You want to take your message. You want to take your wisdom. You want to take what you're passionate about. You want to take what you fully understand and turn that into an online course, a one-on-one -on -one coaching program, a group coaching program, and possibly a uh, a one-year, not possibly, you should create a one-year coaching program that includes everything else, right? So if you do one-on-one -on -one coaching, right? If you do group coaching, those could be two separate things and you could sell them for two different prices. Uh, you can do one-on-one -on -one coaching, you could do group coaching, and then you can do a combination of the two. And that's even another program. And then from there, you have like a tangible product that you give them, right? A, a package, a program, uh, the online course, like I said, something like that. And then you put all of those together and those are your four packages, right? So you, and here's how you sell it. Each of these small packages that you sell individually, see one-on-one, -on -one, uh, online, and what I say, and group, you sell them for a price where if you combine them together, it's a higher ticket. It should be, right? So individually, right? They're lower. Well, they're a price. I should say not a lower price. They're lower price than if you sell them all together. But individually, they're a certain price. If you buy them all three individually, I'm going to make up a number. Let's say they'll cost you uh, 25K, right? So each of these individually bought, purchased would be a total of 25K. You take all three of those and you put them into one program, one program, and that program you sell at a discount at 18K or 20K or something like that. So you could say you could buy these individually. Yeah, if you just need this, A, I'd love to do it. If you just need B, I'd love to do it. If you just need C, I'd love to do it. I can help you with any one of those. And if you buy all of those individually, because a lot of people will buy one package from you and then they'll buy the next and then they'll buy the next and they'll end up paying that higher price of 25K. And that's okay. But you can also say during your sales talk and you're trying to help them and, and you know what they need. So you're giving them what they need. You can say, but if you get all three of these, I can give them to you for 18K today, right? And then that's your higher, your higher ticket that you sell. So you need to put your packages together, understand what they are, price them so that they are individually, they're good prices. People maybe could only afford, you know, 5K, 10K today. Um, so they buy these individually and it's 30K. You understand? All right. So put your packages together, get your wisdom together. Get your knowledge together. Get your experiences together. Think about the life experiences you had, right? That apparel story that I just told you, most people would not realize that there's so much wisdom gained in that. Your wisdom is not common knowledge, right? How many people have created a business over a six-month period, started doing six figures, right? How many people over six over, over a six-month period have warehousing and 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 hundreds of connections and are at trade shows and all of these types of things. That's wisdom. I can show people how to do that. I can show people how I did that, right? Most people have those experiences and don't think that there's any value in it. Why? Because we don't believe in ourselves. We think oh, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And I'm speaking for that from experience also, right? A lot of the things that I've learned over my lifetime, experiences, right? And a lot of it has to do with life coaching, the life experiences that I've learned, um, I've sat in rooms and people are having discussions about, you know, certain topics and they'll ask a question and I wouldn't answer because I'd say, well, if I know that everybody, everybody, that must be common knowledge. Everybody must know that. That's why I use that term common knowledge <laughs> because I used to sit there and I would think that in my head, in the room of 10 people and the question would be asked and I'd have an answer. I'd have a couple of answers and I wouldn't answer. I'd go, ah, if I know that, every, these guys must know that. They must be looking for something outside of 
what I know, right? I mean, if I know it, everybody knows it. That's a form of self-sabotage. That's a form of not being worthy. That's a form of not believing in ourselves. That's a form of allowing ourselves to think that we're not better than anybody else. I did that for many, many, many years of my life. That all goes back to conditioning and associations and childhood traumas and all these things that I'm not really here to share with you, but I will uh, post a video in this group of my personal story. And you can, then you'll be able to see my background. Maybe I'll just share it in the, in the comments here and you guys can click on it and you can, you can listen to my personal story and, and how I got involved in or, or started and passionate about uh, helping people share their story and in the coaching industry that I, that I, that I do now. So, okay, let me go back. Um, we, we don't believe in ourselves and, and we don't realize that our story is powerful and that we have wisdom that we can share with people. And when you realize that, then you'll have a coaching program. When you realize that you become the coach, right? And I tell everybody, okay, you have a powerful story. And the first thing you need to do is get on stage, right? And if you are on stage and you're sharing your story and that, and when I say stage, it doesn't matter what stage, I don't care. It doesn't matter. That's the other myth that we can get into is that, um, Everybody thinks that they can take a course and then start immediately getting paid to share their story or speak on stage. And uh, it's a rarity that as soon as you take a course and that you have a message, that people start paying you to share it. You know, uh, it takes work to do that. It takes work to build that up. And, and, and I'll get into that in just a minute. OK, um, I don't want to I don't want to get off track. I keep getting off track. So once once you understand that you do have a powerful story and you get it together, um, and you start sharing it on stage. And uh, I always tell people, you got you to gotta share it on stage, right? And then stage can be a few things. Personally, I've learned and I understand that when you're on a live in-person stage, that you instantly create credibility and authority amongst the audience because you're on that stage, you have your mic, you have your mic, uh, you're dressed up nicely and you're sharing a message, you're sharing wisdom. And when you share wisdom, that's why I, I like the, the, the personal story, your story sells. When you're sharing your story, it's natural, it's authentic, right? And and it's easy to share and you become emotional when you're sharing it because there are some rough times that we've been through. So you're very passionate, it's easy to share your story. You're not doing a presentation on something that you learned. Maybe that's a little bit more, it's not so authentic. You're like, oh, A, if you do this, B, if you do that. When you're sharing your story, it's it's easier to do, right? When, when, when I'm teaching is one thing, but when I was sharing my story about uh, the, the apparel industry, it was a little bit different. You could see the flow, you see the natural. It was just me. It was my life. It was my story. It was easy to share. So tell everybody you need to be on stage, live on stage. Uh, you can use the same message, the same story that you put together in webinars. Obviously, um, you can do them uh, at volunteer at you know one of the BNI meetings, at you know community meetings, networking meetings, all those types of things. You can volunteer to go share your message. After you get footage of you on stage, after you start getting some recognition, after you're getting pictures of yourself on stage, you're putting it online. You're putting it on all the social media, you learn the SEO and you get yourself when you Google. I, 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 I always ask everybody, if I Googled your name, what would come up, right? If, if you Google Raul Lopez Jr., you will see everything about me. Raul Lopez is a very common name. I am a junior, so I use junior in all of my branding. So if you Google Raul Lopez Jr., JR, you'll see everything about me. If you Google Tag Talks, my speaking form, Tag T-A-G Talks, you'll see everything about tag talks, right? So branding is a whole other thing. Uh, and and that, that's when you start getting paid to speak. People will see you, people will recognize you, people will refer you. And that's when you start getting paid to, to speak. So get on stage, start getting your message out there anywhere that you can. Make sure you got your SEO down and that you're getting yourself found online when people are keen in keywords, whatever your, your, your topics are, right? Share your story, uh, marketing, you know, I don't, I don't know what you guys coach in, but make sure you're using the keywords for your specific coaching industry. When you're on stage and you're teaching, I tell you, I tell everybody, you have to be in a book, right? If you're on stage speaking, you, people are going to want more from you. So you should have a book that's sitting there on a table after you're done speaking so that you can sell your book. So you speak it on stage and you get yourself a book out there, okay? Some are reversed. Some people wrote a book first. Great, wonderful. If you are in a book, you should be on stages and on webinars and everywhere else sharing what's in your book. It should be the same message, right? Now, here's the other thing. When you're on stage and in a book, you're automatically become the coach. People want more from you. You're on stage, you have the authority, you're being authentic, you're teaching from your heart, you're teaching from your wisdom. People want more of you, they're gonna go buy your book. People are gonna buy your book, they're gonna read your book, they're gonna watch your videos online and they're gonna go, hey, can you help me? I went through that same challenge or I'm growing this business. Depending on the industry, they're going to want more from you. So does your story sell? Yes. How does it sell? Because you create packages, you're in front of people and they start coming to you, 
right? One of the biggest challenges that people have, all of us in the coaching industry, all of us, uh, well, I don't know about the marketing because that's what it takes, is uh, finding the audience, right? Get in front of an audience. That's what we help people do. We put them in front of our audience so that they can be found. When you put people, I mean, the hardest thing is uh, get in front of an audience. So when you're sharing on stage, you start to put yourself out there. And when you're speaking for free, per se, it's not necessarily free, especially if you're selling a package, right? We talked about it. You get in a book, you can sell your book. We put your coaching packages together, you have coaching packages to sell. So you should never, or you're never technically speaking for free. I've gotten on to, uh, I've done a lot of stuff in the real estate industry. i um, been invited to speak at live events. I mean, invited to masterminds at mansions and two days and just paid everything and just wonderful things. Um, and then I've been invited to speak online to, to real estate groups and uh, other type of companies groups. And what will always happen when I'm speaking for free per se is I share a story, talk about what I do. And then people reach out to me and they go, Hey, I loved your talk. Can you help me with a, B or C? And then I'll sell them a package. Right? So would you rather get $5,000 to go speak somewhere and not be able to sell, but just share motivation? Great. Yeah. Or would you rather go speak somewhere for free where you can sell a package and you make 50 K? hundred K <laughs> for talking for 45 minutes to 90 to, to, to 90 minutes. Um, that's, that's the way to look at it. Create your coaching packages, get in front of as many people as you can for free. Um, if they want to pay your, your, your travel and all that, great. Some people will pay you. Um, and there's different types of speaking gigs. Uh, the, you know, like right now at the beginning of the year, I get uh, corporate speaking gigs. People are looking for corporate people to come and speak. And if you're going to speak at a company, you know, Apple, Google, you know, Yahoo, these big corporations, um, you can't sell anything. You're just teaching, training, coaching, and, and motivating. So, you know, I'll take five and 10 K to, to, to do those, you know, if they fit into my schedule, but I'll tell you what, if a company calls me and says, I'll pay you five K to come speak for an hour, but I also have an opportunity to go speak somewhere for free that I don't get paid, but I can sell something. I'll take the one where I can sell something every single time. Right. How does this all happen? It happens by sharing your personal story. How does your personal story get out there? You got to start. You got to start putting it together. Okay. What is the basis of the story? I love the Pixar model, Pixar movies. I love the model. Right. And I think it's pretty common. Ooh, I don't think I wrote, I wrote it down in short, right? You start out with a bang. Boom. What does every movie start out with? With a punch. Something happened. Back. What was I watching uh, the other day? Um, oh, a Matrix. Not Matrix. Oh, well, Matrix is a great movie, too. Um, but uh, a good example. What's the other movie that Keanu Reeves, is, Keanu Reeves is in that's really popular? The one where he's just like this martial artist, just awesome guy. Um, what is that movie called? I was just looking at the, the... Oh, John Wick. John Wick, right? How does John Wick movie start every single time? right? He's usually getting shot or about to die or something crazy is happening to him, right? So you start out your talk very similar to the, the flow of a movie. Pixar, I said Pixar because they have it written out and I and I, I, I actually printed it out and I, I don't have it here in front of me. But for the most part, you start with the punch, you catch people's attention is what you do, right? And then you start to talk about who you are today and why and how you became that person. And when you say how you became that person, you go all the way back to the beginning, right? Into the beginning. For me personally, when I share my story, I talk about, I go back to when I was born and the first seven years of my life. And then what happened to me at the age of seven. Again, I'll put the, the link to the video in the comments here and you can, you can hear my story, the shortest version I have of it. But then it goes all the way to what the childhood trauma that happened to it, me at seven. And then the challenges, you know, at nine years old, I started doing drugs. 13 years old, I had my first kid. 14, I got incarcerated and I did this and I lived this and I've been here and I've been there. And all of these things that I experienced based on the beginning, right? And then the next thing I knew, I was in San Quentin prison. San Quentin prison, I made a decision. I needed to change my life, right? And when you make a decision, there's no looking back. You move forward and you fight and you fight and you fight and you do whatever you have to do to achieve that goal that when you made that decision. My decision was to just change my life. I went to college and studied and I did all these different things. Um, from the time I got out of prison within five years, six years, uh, I had made multi-millions of dollars. I had the drive. I made a decision and I was going for it. I was going after it, right? So a punch at the beginning, the punch for me may have been like, you know what? I got out of prison when I was 24 years old, San Quentin prison, the most notorious prison, you know, <laughs> when I was 24 years old, boom, catch people's attention. But let me tell you how I got there, right? Boom, all the way back, seven years old. I start to tell how that ended up for me. And then I talk about, hey, I made a decision. And that's the shift of the talk. I make a decision 
right? What did I do when I made that decision? I did A, B, and C. Where did that decision take me? It took me to college. It took me to Fortune 500 job. It took me to uh, a, a wonderful home, you know, a family, these types of things. Where did it go from there? Here's what I do now and here's why. What the punch all the way back to what happened to me, how I got there, made a decision. I took these steps. Here's what I do now. Here's how I do it. Here's how I teach it. And if you'd like to join me, I'm at the back, blah, blah, blah. I have a, here's my link, whatever it is, right? In short, that's the structure. What I will make sure that I do on uh, next week is I will have the structure right here in front of me and I'll go through it more in detail. But a talk is very similar to a movie. If you look at the format of a movie, right? That's the same thing you put into your 20 minute, into your 45 minute, into your 90 minute talk. A beginning, how, and, and a lot of it is, Here's you, you give them the punch and then you, from there you go to, here's what I'm going to teach you. And then you teach it. And then here's what I taught you. So at the end, you always want to kind of wrap everything up that you've talked about and you come back to that punch from the beginning. Right? So I start with the punch and then I go into my story and then boom, all of a sudden I'm in San Quentin prison in the middle of my talk. And it, I, I brought that back around and then I go again further from there. So that's, that's in short, how to put your story together, how to put your packages together and why your story sells. Why in any industry that you're in, it doesn't even matter if you have a corporate job, if you have a business or you have a job, you're always selling something, right? And sometimes you're just selling yourself, right? If you're trying, if you're applying for work, <laughs> for jobs, then you're selling yourself when you're sitting there in front of, of, in front of whoever you're interviewing with, right? If you are online on stage, you're selling yourself, right? This is who I am. This is what I've been through. This is what I do. This is how I help people. You're selling yourself. Your story sells right? Your story can sell a product. Your story can sell you. Your story can sell your, your coaching packages, your offers, everything that you have. The first thing you have to understand is that you have a powerful story, that you have wisdom that is not common knowledge. And then you format your coaching packages. You format your, uh, your well, you format your talk and then you for, and you format your coaching packages. And then you get out there and you start finding speaking gigs. And your speaking gigs are a mat. Let me tell you how to get some speaking gigs. Okay, there are online forums that people search for um, for speakers. Thumbtack is one of them. Look up Thumbtack. I think it's just thumbtack.com. But people put themselves on there, and then when people are looking, when companies or other people are looking for speakers, they go there and they look. Okay, I need a speaker on childhood trauma. I need a speaker for kids. I need a speaker for schools. I need a speaker for my corporate business. And depending on how you have yourself set up, they'll find you. I mean, some people that play guitar are on there. You know, they they play guitar. So somebody goes in there and Google's our, our keys in looking for somebody who plays the guitar. They'll find them. So Thumbtack, that's a good resource for you. Um, your story sells. You're selling yourself. People will know, like, and trust you, and then they'll want more from you, okay? The more you brand yourself, right, your name, I, I always suggest people brand their name, right? If, if I got an email right now from, and it said Microsoft on it, I think it was spam, and I, I'd know it was from some company, and I wouldn't even open it, right? But if I got an email from Brandon Hintz, I'd go, oh, who is this guy? If I, I know who he is, but if I didn't know, I'd go, oh, Brandon Hintz, who's he? And I'd click on it, right? Because it's a person, right? People want to deal with people. People want to talk to people they know, like, and trust. People want to do business with people they know, like and trust, <laughs> right? Your story sells. You are selling yourself in anything that you're doing first, right? What is that term I always hear? And I love it. It's true. They say, um, your energy speaks louder than your words. I heard you and got to know you before I even heard you talk, right? Because a lot of times when you're walking into the room, the way you present yourself, everything else, your energy presents you. So that's a whole nother story. And that's a whole nother uh, teaching in regards to sharing your story from stage, right? You can't get up there and be like, Hi, my name is Raul, and I'm going to tell you about my life. <laughs> that doesn't work, right? Nobody wants to hear that. You got to go, hey, how you doing today? My name is Raul Lopez Jr. I'm the founder of, and I do this, and I do that, and I do that. And I'm going to tell you what, before that, I was in prison. I was in prison. I was locked. I was incarcerated for over 10 years. Boom. People go, what? This guy was in prison? And they get scared, or they want to hear more, <laughs> one or the other. All right. Your story sells. You need to be an author. You need to be speaking from stage. You need to be speaking in webinars. You need to have wonderful packages. You need to be able to... to to be able to talk about who you are, the wisdom that you have, and then transfer that into a package that you sell that people are going to want, okay? Too many times I get on calls with people selling me something. Oh, here's the other thing. Understand your audience. <laughs> Understand your audience and who you're talking to. I did talk about, I do some corporate stuff. I talked to some real estate people. 
each of those different audiences, I, I tailor my talk. I use my personal story, but I tailor my talk to the different industries that I go talk to. Sometimes I get on calls with people that are selling me something. They've done zero research on me or they don't know who I am. Um, uh, not that people are supposed to know who I am, but a lot of times they come from like LinkedIn, right? And they'll start messaging me. And then when we get on a call, it's very obvious that they they did not look at my LinkedIn profile. It was all just their marketing. Um, my values at my age, at this stage in life, and all that I've been through are are specific. They're 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 not just about money and women, <laughs> like a lot of young guys about money and women. And the reason I even say that is because the call, the example I'm going to give you, I got a call from a guy, and he said he's a hypnosis expert and uh, he can change my life and he can make my life perfect and all these wonderful things. And I said, really, what do you, well, what are you going to do for me? Like how? Like what? What are you going to change for me? And the guy said, you can make. I will make sure that you can make as much money as you want and have any girl that you want. <laughs> and I go, what? And he's like, yeah. He's like, your life will be perfect. You can have any girl you want, any woman, man, walking down the street. You have any woman you want. You'll have all the money you want and your life will be perfect. And I go, hmm. I said, so you think, well, I asked him how old he was and he was 23. <laughs> okay, now, I'm not insulting anybody who's 23. Okay, especially if you're out there and you're hustling, you're making calls and you're and you're selling, you're doing good. Because when I was in 23, I was in prison, right? So I'm not putting down anybody at any age, but when you're 23, yeah, that's probably what's important to you, women and uh, a man, 23 year old man, money and women, right? I mean, I'm I'm 52, right? So this guy calls me and he's talking to me about money and women. I've had I've I've had millions and I've lost millions, right? I've been broke, I've been rich. Okay, right. I understand it. I, I, I'd rather have the money. I love money. I'd, I'd rather have the money, but it's not what makes you happy. I've learned that. That's for sure, right? And then, as far as any woman I want, I, I'm not interested in woman after woman after woman. You know, I just, I, I want to be in a relationship. <laughs> That's it. I want to be in a relationship. I want to be married. I want to have. You know, I, I I'm I'm good there. So he didn't understand. He didn't know me, and his whole pitch was. You can have all the money you want. It's going to make you happy. And you can have any woman you want. Every night you can have a different girl. That's going to make you happy. So when I asked him, I said, is that what you think? That that money makes you happy? Yeah, that was his true belief. Yes, of course money makes you happy. No, it does not. Money is better. Than, having money is better than not having money. And money is wonderful. And I love it. And I attract it right now. I'm not pushing it away. But it's not what makes you happy. I had millions of dollars. I sat at my desk all night like this, depressed. It's not about the money. Okay. Money's good. It's not what makes you happy. All the women, all the men, whatever you want, it's not gonna make you happy either, right? Person to person to person to person. That's not what people want. We're we're, we're spiritual beings, right? I don't know. I, me, I love God. I believe in God as a creator of the universe. I believe God incarnated as Jesus Christ came to earth and told us how to survive on this earth. Those are my beliefs. As a human being here on this earth, uh, on this human experience, we need people in our lives. We need love. We need to be in love. We need to have somebody near us. We need to have somebody around us. We need to have the companionship. We need to share. We need to work together. We need to, to have a life together. So woman after woman after woman, man after man after man, having every man, a different man every, every night, having a different woman every night, that's not, that's not happening. I'm sorry. That's, that might be a young, clubbing, drunken person who at some point is going to go, what the hell? This is not what life's about. <laughs> All right. How did I get onto that? Oh, we're talking about sales. And and that this guy, he didn't understand his audience and he, and, and he was telling me what would make me happy. And he had no idea. And uh, obviously he did not make the sale. So going back, right. That was another story, right? Your story sells. Uh, so going back, know your audience, have your talk, be in a book, Get on stages, volunteer. When you're speaking for free, make sure you're getting something for it. Make sure you're able to sell. Make sure you're getting a video of yourself on the stage. It's very important. Uh, when people apply to speak at my Tag Talks speaking forum, um, I, I require a, a video of their talk. I want to see a professional video of their talk. And over these last few years, because of things that have happened around the world, a lot of people are just doing stuff online right now, which is fine. Nothing wrong with doing something online, just like we're doing right now. But it's a whole lot different than speaking on stage in front of an audience. I'll tell you that, right? Uh, Brandon talked the other day. We did an event together last month. And he talked the other day about how he hadn't been on stage in two years and that, he, you know, he basically forgot how nerve wracking it could be, right? It's, I get nervous every time I get on stage and I'm on stage a lot. I get nervous every single 
time. And in my head, I try to talk myself out of speaking on that stage. But what do I do? No, I get up there and I do it and I just get into who I am. I love to share and speak with people. But anyways, he talked about getting on stage. And I remember we, we were we were in the green room and uh, he was sweating. And we, it was funny because we happened to be kind of dressed the same. We had the, the brand of the company we were speaking with on our shirts and we both had uh, navy blue jackets on. And uh, he's like, man, it's hot, man. I'm sweating. I got to take off my jacket. Dude, aren't you hot? I go, it's not hot, dude. It's you. <laughs> And he was like, no, dude, it's hot. It's hot. I'm sweating, man. And he's walking back and forth. He keeps telling me it's hot. I go, it's not hot, dude. It's you. I go, you're nervous. Take a couple of breaths, dude. I go, it's not hot. And then he got out there. He was all hot. And he calmed down. He got out there and he killed it. He did a wonderful job uh, speaking. But um, make sure that uh, or, or understand that speaking online like this is wonderful. And you can make money doing it. You can make a ton of money doing it. We teach that too. Um, doing webinars, right? Uh, but speaking on stage is different in front of an audience standing there looking at an audience the microphone on in your ear or in your hand it's a lot different so you have to get yourself some practice you got to get it out there and that's why when people want to speak at our events or my events i tell them um you have to uh you have to send me a video of you on a stage and so often they'll send me them on a zoom or something and i just go i'm sorry that doesn't that doesn't count so you have to get yourself a video of yourself on a beautiful professional stage speaking so that when you go and apply to speak at places or you call yourself a speaker or you tell people that you're a speaker and you have a great message for them um, and then you could send them that video of pictures and videos of you on stage. So now if you're speaking on stages and you have videos of, that show people your talent, you're in books, you have coaching programs, right? You're the coach, you're the author, you're the speaker, you're the coach. That's what you're trying to do here. You have it all. You have it all there, right? Um so fun. It's what I do. It's what I help people do. Um, I'm, I love being here in this group and helping people learn and understand that your story sells. Okay. I'm going to cut this a little bit short. We're at about 40 minutes. I'm not sure how long I'm supposed to go. So I don't know if I'm cutting this short or going long here, but again, I, I love this group. Um, the coaches here are amazing. Thank you, Brandon, for setting this up for us. Um, and I will see you guys next Monday. If you have any questions, um, the links to get into here has a place where you can ask the questions. I didn't, I didn't get any today. I'm looking, I didn't get any questions, but put them in uh, the group here in the comments and I'll answer them for you in our next call next week. Oh, the other thing is this call said it was going to be at 11 AM on Mondays, but at that one o'clock, we'll change that up. We'll make sure that uh, we, we correct the time, but it's at 1 PM PST every Monday. You'll see me here. I'll be teaching and training um, about how your story sells and I'll help you guys grow your businesses. All right, everybody enjoy the day. Thanks for being here. See you in the group. One, two, three. Ted Talks! Yay!